everyone. I'm Abdullah Snowbar. I'm the executive director for the DMZ and the CEO for DMZ Ventures. We are a tech incubator headquartered in downtown Toronto. Abdullah, thanks so much for taking the time. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you, something I've been looking forward to for a few weeks now. Uh, let's start off by speaking about the Canadian innovation ecosystem. I want to know from you how you would characterize it and what you see as our strengths, our weaknesses, and possibly even our opportunities within it. For sure. Look, thank, first of all, thanks, Tim. And uh, I'm happy to get into get into kind of the Canadian innovation ecosystem and more so about uh, our strengths and the weakness and obviously the opportunities that exist today. Um, uh, on, a, on the positive side of things, first and foremost, I think we've seen exponential growth um, in the number of startups, number of VC investors, uh, the global uh, tech giant callings in the space in general, and it's been it's been really positive. And I think all in all, um, from where we were ten years ago, which was maybe in the beginning phases of of kind of building up this innovation nation to today, we've seen exponential growth. And I really mean that. Um, you know, some of the examples include smashing you know prior venture capital uh, venture capital uh, yearly records in 2021. You know, I think we more than doubled it from 2020 to 2021, which is incredible. Um, the Canadian talent pools are experiencing faster growth than any other tech markets across North America. Uh, I actually just sat with uh, for a coffee with the American VC from a pretty substantially for a, a large VC in, in San Francisco, and she said, without question and without doubt, the Canadian talent pools are some of the best in the world, if not the best. And it's just incredibly difficult to be able to lock in the Canadian talent right now because they're in high demand. So it's awesome to see that. And the number of growing STEM graduates in the country has been, again, exponential in, in itself. Um, and uh, we are now becoming more globally recognized for our immigration programs, where we're actually helping attract highly talented individuals, make Canada home and work within the startup and innovation space, which is which is all good to see. Um, I, we got to get into the weak kind of weaknesses, call it, or maybe areas of improvement more than anything else. But um, one thing that we realize as as a DMZ, as an organization here headquartered in the city, is that you know funding for early stage startups was a bit imbalanced, and you know support for you know seed financing versus Series A and Series B was a bit lacking. And uh, you know I think there's an area there to improve. So uh, generally speaking, Tim, a majority of VC dollars are going towards later and growth stage companies. And uh, it makes it really hard for like really high potential early stage companies to have the runway they need to mature. Um, and, you know, we end up missing out on the startups that have the potential to become the next big competitive business in the country and a globe, become a global operation. So um, that's an area that we know for sure that we got to do better on. Um the other part is a talent crunch. I just mentioned to you that, you know, Canada's positioned itself as probably the best hub in the world for talent. And, you know, engineers and devs coming out of the space here are becoming, you know, sought after quite quickly. You know, there's also the crunch that comes with that as well. And across industries in Canada, we're feeling this talent crunch and everyone's looking to hire engineers and developers and data scientists. And, uh, you know, you end up losing out on that in particular with the call it uh, with the post pandemic uh, you know, time where uh, no one needs to be physically anywhere anymore. And we're, we're shifting into this very virtual marketplace where I can be a Canadian working out of Seattle, but still living in my Toronto downtown condo and you're making a pretty competitive salary. And um, I think that really does change the landscape. Uh, good for the talent, you know, difficult for the small business that's trying to hire the talent. And obviously it puts startups at a bit of a disadvantage when it comes to securing this kind, these kind of individuals. And, um, you know, part of it, nature of the beast is that, you know, earlier stage startups have less budgets for salaries. They can probably position themselves with more equity, but, uh, and definitely not as much job security. Um, and, uh, you know, and the, the idea is to stand out from the, from the rest of the larger enterprise that can afford uh, the talent. What would you say is needed? And I'm I'm leaving this very general because I want you to go wherever you want with it. It could be needed from government, needed from industry or academia or any other stakeholder you think is important uh, to to really drive more innovation, but also specifically commercialize it and grow those companies based off that innovation. It's a great question, Tim. So I think, look, uh, I can get into a bit of the high level stuff to talk about what's needed to really make you know. Canada more successful and to successfully commercialize innovation in, in its own right. Um, 
uh, on the on the call it ten thousand feet above call it perspective, we need to be better at collaborate to ensure that in innovations can really be brought to market. So let me tell you what I mean by that. Uh, there needs to be a stronger team effort <laughs> between you know the startup ecosystems like incubators and accelerator programs, um, governments, universities, you know, and it, these kind of things ensure that our businesses have the right tools to create their IP. Um, there are like really neat programs that are coming out, like the government of Ontario's, um, they recently launched a program called Intellectual Property Ontario, which is going to be helping businesses commercialize their ideas and products and maximize um, the IP potential and increase their global competitiveness. So I think that collaboration could obviously be, uh, you know, working in, in tandem with each other and better synergies is going to really help elevate that potential. Um, we also need to look at Canada's emerging tech like, what are we good at? What are we strong at? What do we know we can double down on that would set us apart from the rest of the world? That incorporates and includes things like AI, quantum computing, robotics, blockchain even, you know. So I think we have, we've had immense disruption uh, and, you know, and a lot of potential. And um, I think we're at the forefront of, you know, of the research here. And if I think about AI and quantum computing, what Vector Institute is doing here in Toronto has been quite global and, and uh, world renowned. And uh, we need to push that out even more. We need to celebrate these things. So, you know, we're investing millions of dollars to ensure that Canada is a leader in these technologies. And we need to, you know, we need to make sure our investments are, are protected. Um, and preventing IP leakage is essential to the future of the country's economy. And uh, these are areas that we just want to uh, call it, you know, call it focus a bit more attention towards, or we should at least. Now, a big part of what the DNZ and other incubators uh, across the country do is obviously help small uh, startups or individuals that have an amazing business idea uh, grow and scale. Uh, I'd like to know from you, uh, what are the main challenges you see our Canadian entrepreneurs facing both locally, but also when they try to expand into uh, the international sphere? Actually, I think probably the most important thing is customer acquisition potential. So, you know, a lot of startups come to the space and they have, you know, they've been able to build a great product. They've been able to understand the problem. They understand the market size. They have a great team, but now they actually need to be able to acquire customers to get the product on its feet and get the business on its feet and moving forward. So customer acquisition is a really big, you know, challenge sometimes with, you know, and without new customers, startups can't really grow. So entrepreneurs need to work obviously very aggressively to implement a customer centric working philosophy. Um, they need to get creative and understanding how to build out a better partnership and pilot, you know, a strategy, a sales cycle, sales, a sales, uh, sales strategy in itself. Um, so customer acquisition, I'd say is one, uh, following customer acquisition for sure. I'd say capital and access to capital. Um, you know, it's still a serious problem for entrepreneurs. Although I told you that, you know, we, you know, we, we did awesome in 2021 relative to every other year. Compared to U.S. counterparts, you know, our entrepreneurs have to wait a bit longer for funding and to sometimes even receive less money. So we're slowing their growth trajectory by not doing them a favor of moving fast. The third thing, and I, again, I don't want to beat, you know, uh, you know the, the, this, this point too much, but I think it's really important, access to tech talent. This has become, I think, one of the most important topics without question globally. Talent, 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 talent. And I, I spend so much time talking to founders and you know, putting out thought leadership and speaking to alumni and understanding how do we get around this this shortage of talent and in particular tech talent in the space and how do startups really position themselves as being competitive when they're recruiting individuals. So, you know, with things like the shift to remote work and the competition for talent going global because of this virtual environment, you know, startups are struggling and, you know, we, we need to, you know, we can't compete with the corporate salaries that are currently existing. So, and then the last thing I'll say is just the international market uh, challenges. What exists there is really founders sometimes are reluctant to look beyond the current borders or maybe even the current continent that they sit in. Um, and here's an example, you know, only about 12% of uh, Canadian small businesses export their products or services globally. 12%. It's insanely small. And imagine what the missed opportunities are there, right? Like it's a, uh, when we're talking about 12%, it literally we haven't even scraped off the you know the 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 the, big, the the top of it. So Canadian startups need to think a lot more internationally in order to succeed. You know, our, our market in comparison to other countries is very small. So we're not this is not a place to 
start, grow, and scale. This is the place to start, grow, understand how to pivot, change, and then build for the international market. Um, and that's where the mindset needs to shift towards more and more. Abdullah, you've uh, you've given me so much already, and I've put you on the spot. And I want to do that one more time by allowing you to put somebody else on the spot. I want to hear what your call to action would be uh, to, to anybody in Canada who you think has the power uh, to improve our innovation or entrepreneurship uh, ecosystem. Who would you pitch and what would you urge them to do now? It's a hard one, Tim, you know, because I, um, I can call a lot of, you know, we, we can, we can, I can pitch a lot of people for sure. But if I had to pick one, I would pick uh, government and policymakers. And I'll tell you why. In order to be the best at what we do, you know, you're seeing my shirt, I'm wearing the be great. You know, that's actually one of the DMZ values that we stand by and we live by every day. Uh, we need to build a winning mindset that has the potential to make Canada a leader in the innovation economy. We are doing incredible things. Let's talk about it more. Let's make sure that the mindset is mainstream, that the mindset is understood by Canadians of, across the entire nation. And this has become part of our DNA. And let's push that message as much as we can. The Canadian government, I would also say, needs to assert its position on the innovation stage as a global leader. Now is not the time to be humble or coy. Now is the time to be out there, aggressive and proud. And that's my message. You know, when, when we're on the international stage, this is where people like the prime ministers can do a better job when they're traveling the world, always being intentional and having a delegation of startups join them that are high potential. If, he's, if the PM is going to Dubai or going to China or, you know, whatever, or Asia or going to Latin America, be intentional in taking a certain group of individuals because what the PM can do in terms of opening up doors, they can never do on their own. They, they're ready to do that. They're ready to, to engage with the right customers and the right governments globally. But the idea of how long it would take them on a sales cycle to do that relative to how long it would take our PM or some of our ministers to open up the door for them is like this, you know, it's crazy. So I think that's part of it. And, you know, when we go up, and we, we actually we start positioning ourselves globally and we and we we go to things like like the expos where we show up but we don't but we don't show out we got to really change that narrative and that dynamic as well and we got to be if we're going to be somewhere be there and be there 100% and be great about it the other thing i'd say is um, better or you know lower processing times right now for programs like the canadian global talent stream and the start of visa programs those are incredible incredible thoughts and ideas but they're being delayed so much and people who are looking to 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 bring international talent to canada to toronto are being delayed heavily and they're not actually able to bring their talent to to touch ground here in the country as fast as they should or as fast as, as we once promised them 